All right, well, welcome uh, to the Steel Bridge Preliminary Design presentation. Um, my name is Sylvia Garcia. My name is Jay Beal. I'm Ryan Kimura. And Scotty Nowak. We would like to start by thanking you all for attending, um, in particular to the professors, Professor Surratt, Professor Nelson, and Henry. So the outline for tonight, we are going to talk a little bit about the Mid-Pacific Conference. Um, our approach to the steel project design. And um, we're going to talk a little bit about the, pres the competition rules, and then we'll go into the split designs. Um, Scotty and Ren will go first, and then Jay and I will follow. And at the end, we'll reserve some time for your questions. So a little bit about why we're here. Um, our senior design project, which is the end of the year capstone for engineering students, um, we chose to do the Steel Bridge competition. This competition is sponsored by ASCE, uh, and we will participate in the Mid-Pacific Regional Conference. This year, it's hosted by Santa Clara University and um, co-hosted by San Jose State, so it's gonna be held locally. Uh, the date of the competition is April 20th, and the national competition, which is held at the University of Washington, will be May 31st. Okay. And we'll go next. All right, so Santa Clara University, as Sylvia said, is the host of this competition. Um, so actually yesterday at the career fair, I had an opportunity to talk with you know, one of the companies and he even said that Santa Clara, um, our reputation in those kind of competitions is, is not really highly regarded. Um, he said it's actually really embarrassing. So, um, which is kind of what we want to do as a team is to regain the reputation uh, of Santa Clara University in the construction industry. So. Um, Okay, so what we've done so far actually is uh, we kind of started a little bit of last year as far as getting the funding rolling. Um, we've actually given presentations at Block, um, handed out donation letters to DEPCON, Flatiron, as well as uh, Hallmark Construction. Uh, we also did a presentation uh, for AGC, Association of General Contractors, as well as ASG. Um, so we're waiting back to we're waiting to hear back from those companies, and um, there also is a potential opportunity for funding with ASC as well. Okay, so um, because we have a four-person team, um, Professor Surrett suggested that we have two separate designs, uh, Jay and Sylvia, and then Scotty and I. Um, so, did you kind of explain the one yeah. construction team? Part? So, like Ren said, there's two design, or we split into two design teams, um, and then that's where the purpose of this pre presentation comes, where we'll pick one design, and we'll continue from here on out as a four-person team. Um, where we'll do scheduling, construction documents, um, shop drawings, and uh, follow the fabrication process of our project. And then at the end, we'll put together um, a build team. So, you know, there was two teams for design, and then we'll continue with one team for construction. Okay, so the problem statement, uh, problem statement given by ASC is that a River City community um, wants to design and construct a steel bridge in order to alleviate the vehicle traffic, which has already exceeded um, the city's capacity. And um, these are the criteria uh, that our bridge will be judged upon at the competition. Um, durability, constructability, usability, stiffness, construction speed, efficiency, economy, and attractiveness. Um, also, like this project actually applies to like, real life situations as far as we wanna build this bridge as fast as we can, but also as efficient as we can in order to limit the amount of travel delays as well as financial losses to these companies um, that are from the River Lake area. Okay, so this is a kind of a layout of what's gonna, what it's, what it's gonna look like at the actual competition. Um, we're gonna have, I guess, designated space for members, uh, temporary pier, tools, fasteners. Um, this white area will be the area that the build team is allowed to walk or uh, place footing in. Or, <laughs> Uh, so the red, the red rectangle is a bridge. Um, it has to cross the river and all the dimensions and stuff like that. Scotty will explain that. All right. Um, so this is taken straight out of the rules given um, by ASCE. Um, this is the 2013 uh, rules uh, that were sent out at the beginning of the year. Um, so <coughs> slight variations from last year uh, with the dimensions. Uh, so this is just the profile of the bridge, um, the max 
uh, length of the bridge is going to be 17 feet with the uh, cantilever portion being at least 3 feet 6 inches. Um, and the bridge is 12 feet, or uh, the river is 12 feet long, so the span has to, the two uh, columns have to span past tw uh, 12 feet, sorry. So there's not a lot of room to uh, vary your bridge uh, in that respect. This second picture is a uh, picture of the bridge envelope uh, in which you cannot build or put, place any members in this section of the envelope. Um, so it kind of restricts you on where you can place your decking supports and uh, if you want any extra supports on the side of the bridge, uh, you cannot go within that area. So there are some boundaries that you have to uh, abide by. Um, so this is the testing for lateral uh, supports. Uh, so for lateral load testing, uh, they place a 75 pound weight on the main span of the bridge, um, restrain it laterally um, at the columns, and then measure sway at two points on the bridge, uh, one at the far end of the cantilever section, and then the other six feet, six inches from the far end from the cantilever side. And then from that, that's how they measure the criteria of who really wins the competition. Um, this is for the uh, vertical displacement. So uh, they put initial weights on the bridge, on the cantilever and main section of the bridge. Uh, as you see, the preloads, which are 50 and 100 pounds each. Um, once that's passed, uh, they start loading the bridge with uh, the loading weights. And on the cantilever portion, it gets up to um, 1,000 pounds, and the main section at 1,500 pounds. So uh, me and Ren are going to discuss our bridge. So this was our final bridge um, design. And as you can see, we have dimensions for all the bridges uh, members. Uh, we have the columns being two feet, five inches, which fits below that decking profile. Um, so we don't have to, uh, we're not restricted to the outer limits of the profile because we're not building above that section. So we can place our lateral restraints below uh, the bridge without it affecting the profile. Um, so that was nice, uh, a good thing that we designed for. The um, cantilever portion, we got to be uh, almost four feet, um, with the main span being 13 feet, uh, giving some room for, I guess, error in constructability uh, when we build the bridge, we're going to have at least six inches on each side of the river span, um, just to be safe. Uh, also in that profile view, um, the decking supports, which are these top members, which the load will be placed on, has to be a minimum or a maximum of three feet um, from outside ends and a minimum of two feet six. So we meet those requirements by placing our bridge at three feet uh, as our width. Um, so for our bridge, uh, we modeled it in visual analysis. Um, and we actually chose members for uh, our bridge in every section. So we have a layout of all the members. Uh, if you could go back. So the first members that we laid out in that spreadsheet were the upper decking support, uh, which are these smaller members um, in a truss system. Uh, and so we made that a smaller member to uh, distribute the load better. 
uh, with a large decking rod or uh, pipe, sorry, at the top to increase the eye um, so that we have a better uh, gauge for deflection. Um, and so, yeah, if we go back to the next slide, um, so we calculated all the amounts of every type of member um, with the diameters, outer and inner. Um, and our columns are HSS sections, uh, two and a quarter inches. Uh, and so we found out that our total members are going to be around 400, which is a good amount. Um, and, but we minimized it so that our total connections would be a lot less. We have 92 connections. Um, we have almost three per, or I guess it would say four per member, but uh, it's really three per every member that we have, uh, which makes it feasible for constructability. Um, and using the basic weight uh, that we found on visual analysis, uh, with not lightweight steel, uh, we found out that our bridge is around 209 pounds, which um, it's kind last of the year, side. yeah, it, it's a little heavy, but uh, we haven't really researched metal uh, types yet. Uh, last year, the average bridge was around like uh, 130 uh, pounds, which is pretty light. But, but that's um, also including the fact that um, it was a 30 foot long bridge last year, and uh, so 17 this year, we, we're expecting like teams such as Cal to actually have maybe weights closer to the, like the lower 100s. So uh, by using lighter weight steel, um, which we will probably, you know, start researching as soon as we get our final design, um, we'll definitely decrease the total weight of the bridge. Yep. And then uh, next. So um, we kind of formatted our or built our little sections in AutoCAD. So this is our decking support um, for the main span and also the cantilever portion. Um, so the top section, smaller trusses, increasing the eye at the top with the large bar um, or large pipe. And then these are kind of how we would connect the pieces with, we would have connection pieces at the end here. Um, that center bar and at the top, uh, so that would increase it to three per side and then two in the center for every truss system on the bottom. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much where we get our connections. We didn't really go that detail into connections yet. Um, we felt like uh, after we finished our final design, it would be best to start to fabricate our actual connections after. So. Didn't really develop any yet. So this is our bridge model in visual analysis. Um, we loaded the members um, at the set criteria. They have uh, this cantilever portion. It's loaded um, from the end of the cantilever portion to three feet, um, which is the length of the decking support. Uh, and so we measured that it was 11, 111 pounds per square foot that we measured. Um, and then also on the main span, it's actually a roll of the dice in where they choose um, the position of the loading. Uh, so it can either be at four feet, six inches or eight feet, six inches. Um, so we actually measured it at the eight foot six um, section uh, and that's at 154 pounds per square foot uh, that we measured. And so this is what our deflected bridge looks like. Um, using pin supports for all our connections and uh, moment resisting connections between every member. Um, as you can see, uh, there's some minor deflections at the end of the cantilever section um, with something crazy going on on our lateral bracing, uh, which we'll discuss later. But, and then uh, you can see some more minimal deflections uh, right where the load was at the mid-span. Uh, 
didn't seem to be too great. Uh, really, what we'll talk about is the cantilever section. Um, we did a close-up view, and it looks all funky, uh, <laughs> which doesn't look good. Uh, the reason why uh, we think that it got really screwy around there is because we modeled it so that the, the members were on the same plane. And so we're actually going to be connecting this lateral bracing below the decking bar, um, which will kind of remove it from any ver vertical uh, loading, uh, which uh, we're going to have to revise and uh, reevaluate this decking support because, um, yeah, we don't really want that lateral bracing to be affected by the uh, vertical loads. And yeah, Jay and Sylvia. So one of the things we were all very nervous about in the beginning separating the two teams and having a little bit of a competition. And we didn't know whether that was a good idea, but in hindsight, uh, I think it was a really good idea because it demonstrated two very different approaches to design. So Ren and Scotty designed a very complete bridge. They designed and modeled everything that needed to go into the bridge to make a uh, competitive entry. So we started instead Instead of designing every little thing, we actually started on a much uh, broader level um, with a design philosophy. And we asked, what governs steel bridge performance? So the, you know, in a typical building, you have loads that enter the building. They're transferred you know, via some load path eventually down into the ground. So this typically dictates your member sizes. And um, so that would be the logical starting point for a steel bridge design. We actually thought that member size, while you had to have something that was large enough to hold the load, that wasn't what governed our design. Instead, we thought that loading paths, coupled behaviors, which create very complex responses that are difficult to model, and then excessive play in the connections were the most important things uh, when we were designing our bridge. So for load paths and coupled behaviors, um, what our approach was is to have a simple um, load path and um, for vertical gravity loads, what we did was um, we wanted the path, so we wanted to follow the path. So we want the path to enter the girder, go along the entire span of the bridge, and then um, at the columns, it would be balanced by the load of the cantilever, and then we'd want pure compression into the columns. So that's, we want you know that simplified load path um, we also wanted to have a singular limit state that would govern. Um, so we only want one, we only want for there to be one reason why um, it would fail. That makes it easier to analyze. Um, for the lateral load, we put the entire bridge into strong axis bending. Um, so basically we create a huge open web truss. And this philosophy produced um, a preliminary design um, we ran loads for a worst case. We actually put the loads um, at the mid-span of the two columns, which we knew would be uh, create the biggest deflection. And, and so that led us to our uh, design of the girders. We went with a triangular section because compared to a rectangular section, it would reduce induced torsion. Um, it would be lighter than a rectangular section. And compared to a um, compared to a deep, narrow uh, section, it would have capacity in vertical and lateral cases. So I said we selected a triangular section, but for modeling purposes, because we know visual analysis has its own assumptions, and if you throw something really complex at it, you can't really um, verify with hand calculations. We chose to do an idolized structure for this reason. Um, and Jay will go into um, how we broke down the member sizes. So everybody actually has a design document at the back of your handout. Um, the 
last page, last couple of pages, um, walk you through our design document, but we're going to walk through them up here. So step one, uh, like Sylvia said, we only wanted one limit state for uh, each element in our girders. So we said we were going to have a triangular section uh, composed of tubular members at the edges of the triangles, or at the corner of the triangle. And we only wanted that to be governed by yielding as opposed to local buckling. So um, AIS 360 uh, has a limiting T over T ratio. So when we were choosing our tubular uh, steel for those elements, we had to make sure that it satisfied that D over T ratio. So next, from the idealized model that we created in visual analysis, we determined the maximum moment and maximum deflection. Um, and then, since we assumed that the model behaved linear, uh, was linear and elastic, we said, okay, if deflection is a function of the loads that you put on, the length cubed, and uh, E and I, um, E doesn't change, I will change, but length of the members and loading is always going to be the same. So those cancel out, and all we had to do, as long as we, our model was going to uh, remain in the linear elastic region of the curve, we just scaled I by the target deflection and an uncertainty factor. So our uncertainty factor was 2.5. Our maximum target deflection in the center span was one inch. And this came up, uh, we used these to scale uh, I from visual analysis. So we picked pipe sections in visual analysis and then we just scaled uh, the I of those pipe sections to what was required for our design. So this is uh, just calculating uh, based upon the geometry of where each one of those elements is going to be. This calculates the distance that we need to space those elements in order to get that required height. Um, so our minimum spacing was 2.04 inches. Uh, we picked two and a half inches uh, mainly because that was easier to measure. And at two inches, we weren't going to have we were going to have very very little clearance uh, between the elements. So we thought from a, a build standpoint, it was much easier to have a little bit extra capacity and put in our diagonal elements. So the other thing that we we're talking about simplifying is connections. One of the hardest parts about any steel bridge is how to model connections. And that's something that visual analysis, we didn't think could do a very good job of. So uh, typically, right in, in design, we take a relatively complex structure and we try to simplify it. So we say a shear connection, uh, like the one shown in this picture, thank you Dr. Surratt uh, for the picture, uh, we model that as a pin. And then a huge plate in the ground, we say that that's fixed. Um, but the question becomes whether if connections and connection slip governs our design, we can't just model these the way that we normally model things. So in fact, Dr. Stratton and I talked a lot about this at the end of last year um, while we were still looking around for senior design projects. And we were talking about modeling um, connections as having spring forces that resisted rotation at each end. And so at a certain force, the spring would resist uh, bending at the ends, but it would still allow for some rotation in the connections. We decided that this was way too hard to model. Um, so how did we solve the connection? Uh, this is a, looking at a triangular girder. So imagine you had these three girders coming in. What's the normal approach? You would put a little collar on each one. You'd have two bolts in each collar, and you'd have six bolts for this connection. That's really, really difficult to assemble. That's difficult to model. And very hard for you to get an understanding of how the overall bridge is going to perform. So we decided to, once again, take a look at the bigger picture, and we stepped back to approximate uh, methods from, visual anal from uh, structural analysis. So this is approximate methods for analyzing trusses. And in trusses, we said that a moment produced at the end was resisted by um, forces in the longitudinal members. Um, you had a tensile and a compressive force. Uh, with some eccentricity, and that was able to balance the moment. So this is the theory that we used for our connection. So we replaced six bolts with two. We took those 
three girders and we connected them with a vertical plate and we said the moment that that plate has to be able to resist is the spacing between two bolts that gives your eccentricity and then the spacing or the uh, maximum shear that those bolts are able to hold um, was able to balance the moment. So there's a, a calculation uh, in there about how what that eccentricity needs to be based upon the strength of the bolt. So step five and six, uh, this is connection details. This is our eccentricity um, of those bolts in order to, to uh, balance the moment created at the end of the girder. And I, I think we're missing a slide here. Okay, so um, step six at the end of our design document um, was uh, to build a single full-scale girder element. So we have a little something to show you tonight. And this is a prototype of our designed girders. Hopefully it won't fall over. So this was the original sketch of our design. Um, so you can see the orientation of a girder like this. Uh, for columns and in girders. Um, at the center span, we modeled a simple connection just to give us the worst possible uh, case in loading. More uh, connection stuff. Are there any questions? So, Actually, we, we can go ahead and bring yes, Scotty right back up. up. We'll now open for uh, questions. Yeah, Sylvia and I made it. We had some free time, you know, over the weekend. Yeah. yeah. Free time. So we'll now answer any questions you guys may have. Can you talk about um, your assembly pieces? How, what's the requirement for the size? You know, how wide, how heavy? So, um, they, the dimensions no longer than three feet uh, and uh, four inches by six inch box that it has to fit within. So this is actually dramatically larger than we wanted. Uh, that's only because most supermarkets didn't have the size of uh, seamless tube that we wanted. So this is actually, uh, the, these guys are inch and three eighths and be designed for three quarter of an inch. So, um, and this is 09, uh, 098 wall thickness and we designed for uh, 056. So we're expecting uh, about a 50 to 60 percent weight reduction when we go to the uh, different heights. So what was the limit for the weight? For the weight? Yeah. There's, no, no. there's no limit. Um, it's just a matter of you get ranked against other schools you're competing. So if, you're, if your parts are heavier than theirs, you can have a hope. Have your overall bridge and you get marked down for that. They, they use equations to calculate who wins. Um, and one of the equations is based on your the weight category. If your weight, your, if your bridge is under 400 pounds, it's a certain equation. And if it's over 400 pounds, it's a different equation. So, you know, it depends on on those those uh, two equations, which one you want to kind of compete under, I guess. Um, but it's the overall weight of the entire bridge. I don't think there's one for individual members unless you guys. No. Yeah. It's, it's, so it's the way, entire, it's entire bridge. Yeah, entire bridge. Yes. What would you guess the approximate weight of the bridge? We haven't really calculated that yet. Okay. Um, mainly just because I think what added a lot of weight to a girder like this was uh, the welding process. So uh, that's probably more due to my personal terrible welding skills. But uh, so. Yeah, we don't have a full estimate for that, mainly because the design's not finished. How much does this piece weigh? Um, this piece is about 25 pounds. Uh, um, yeah. Why did your group use a 2.5 for your uncertainty factor? Isn't that kind of large? Um, yeah, it is, but that kind of comes back to our uncertainty in being able to accurately model what's going on in the bridge. And um, we'd rather first design with some overcapacity and then do stuff like test a girder like this 
to understand how close that is to what we actually um, expect. expect. So we'll, we'll put the connection plates on the end of this and we'll actually test as if it was in uh, an actual bridge. And uh, we'll get an idea of how good our model is. Mm -hmm. what is that? So, um, pull that up. So, our the whole idea with that is simply to tie one side of the girders to the other. So, um, that's going to be extremely thin elements. They're not meant to take any bending load. So, they're purely Rose meant tension. to tie. What? Yeah, they're just tension members. So, they're meant to tie, you know, this side, this girder to that girder to uh, to create that big open web truss. How many sorry, seventy pieces like this, you're gonna have like twenty, thirty pieces. No, I think we were at uh so it's five on ten on each side, um I would say like around thirty. Yeah, I I, I think ours pieces. were uh, about twenty for for these guys, uh, all of this one. The, the big thing that we're that we're still looking at um, is the length of the diagonals that connect. So that would change the vertical diagonals would change um, how many pieces that we had. Over. What is that? Go back one. Yeah. There. How are you welding the plate to the top right hand corner? So the plate will be welded. Um, it will be a just a uh, welded to this top band or to the bottom of uh, this uh, round section, and then we'll have a plate on the bottom. And so that will have to be checked for for bending. Um, so and then we've calculated all of the uh, the different. Uh, distances that we can have to prevent stuff like tear off area. What was your estimated proportion in span? What? I can't wait to um, Was half of that, half an inch. I had the same question for you guys too. When you did your loading, what did you get for your collections? Um, Yeah, I think we got two, close to two inches for deflection on the cantilever, and not as much on the uh, main span. So uh, for the first design, did you guys yeah. consider lateral? Yeah, so... What was your deflection? So we didn't actually model our lateral deflection yet, but... Um, so the reason for some of our lateral uh, bracing, so like I said, the um, the position at which they're gonna uh, measure the sway on the lateral displacement is at six feet six inches from the back of the uh, span, away from the cantilever portion. So we actually um, we actually place our lateral supports so that uh, where, where the two members meet uh, is where six feet, six inches is. Um, and then it braces back into the other uh, girder. So um, that's to help to prevent deflection, um, making those into tension members. Why did you pick, why did you put lateral brakes in all the way? Um, well, this Why is that configuration? Which side are they pulling from? They're, they're pulling from the far side. They told you that? Yeah, so it's how we actually orient our bridge. Um, so if you're looking at... Uh, the rules, right? Yeah, the rules. Uh, this is... So, 
Yeah, they're actually measuring sway on. They call it side it's, it's, how we, it's how we design a bridge that they would measure it on the side where the two brakes meet. Could you account for the fact that you just have a lot of uh, stop or slack in the connection? You would never get that. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, we didn't actually uh, think about memory connections. So we modeled uh, our lateral displacement, but we ended up thinking that uh, our model wasn't accurate, um, and we didn't think that it governed, um, essentially because the whole bridge is going to be in strong axis bending. So we didn't think that what governed uh, that deflection uh, was, you know, which is all the slop in the connections, we didn't think we could do a good job of modeling that. Um, that would be outside the scope of the um, the profile of the bridge that you can't build in. So if you built upwards, you would have to have a separate decking support that you would have to line oh, along the see. bridge. Um, so we thought that would be extra weight, um, unnecessary weight. So we decided to stay below uh, the profile so that we could have our decking supports along with um, along with our uh, supports for the cantilever. That's why we uh, support below um, instead of above. So are you guys designing kind of the top piece and the bottom piece that have to be connected during the competition? Yes. It's um, our member. That's and, right. Yeah, so the total height of this member is going to be uh, one foot. So the bottom section, um, including we, I think we put a inch and a half uh, connection piece um, between the two of them. Uh, so the bottom portion is going to be six inches so that it can fit inside that box. Uh, and then the top is going to be uh, four. Did you guys ever know that there's pretty tall, skinny Yeah. Yeah, that's why uh, I guess possibly include more lateral bracing, um, but having our lateral bracing in the center of the span will help, um, we assume, and then we have the lateral bracing at the end. And that uh, meets the criteria. You only have around a foot and two inches um, if you're trying to build below the profile of the bridge that you can't build in. So that's why we actually chose a um, foot section. What is the height of the lower triangles? The lower ones there. So that's gonna. It's. I believe it's like uh, four, four and a half inches. So that's not a full. That's not that is for the three D versus the. Okay. That's just a cut section. The, so yeah. The, so this actually, this is gonna be the size of our member, and it's um, two feet six inches. Um, no, it's not two feet six inches. That's if, if you were to put a dimension like end to end of the two lower triangles, it would not be two feet six inches, right? Yeah. So you have it's, it's yes. Okay. So it's NTS? Yes. Not to scale. Yes. So, so in there. the two feet six inches, there's only two. Yeah, I guess. I guess I. Yeah, it probably. Uh, Scaled it incorrectly when I put it into the PowerPoint slide. Yeah, because there's no way that's four inches. And yeah. Like two and six. <laughs> yeah. No. Can you go to the overall um, diagram? This one? That one? It looks like there, the bottom, the bottom is the two feet, right? It's like the top numbers, and it's how tall? Where, where are you talking about? Sorry. This? Yeah. 
Oh, so that's actually six inches. But we modeled it so that it would be um, including the connection piece. So that's six inches by two and a half, but two and a half feet, um, or two trusses. It's the scale just looks weird. It just looks weird, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I <laughs> <laughs> Well, so, yeah, so this bottom section's at um, one foot, 1.75 feet. Um, this middle section's at 2.25 feet, and then the top is at 2.5. And so the entire length of this column is two and a half feet. So if I'm doing any miscalculations, then I don't know. So what's your connection between each assembly? So we actually have not designed any connection pieces yet. Um, we we're trying to go for an entire layout of the bridge and then uh, connections after. What do you think it might be? Um, it's like she did. <laughs> well, so we were thinking of, well, so for these two sections, I was actually thinking of, because it's gonna be tube sections, so thinking of doing an L section with the two tubes running out. Um, I guess I don't know how to model this, but this would be going the other way, like this, with a piece coming out, which would be held on by the tubes. And then you would have overlapping on the top and bottom, so the top piece would be um, actually going back like that. Um, and then overlap them so that they would connect. Uh, that's just one idea that we were thinking of, but uh, haven't really gone that into depth. And that is in like the open construction yard, right? What was that? Like, that is, if I remember correctly, there's construction, I don't know what they call it, like the construction yard, so you can do that before it's carried out. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. So no, no dove, yeah, no dovetail, no nothing like that. Uh, and Berkeley's connections are going to get penalized, regardless of what they do. What happened last year? With all the I'm joking. <laughs> uh, no, they're, last they're year's bridge twisting connections will get penalized. Uh, so last year's bridge. The bolt was connected. Uh, yeah, so they they built upwards, so they had. Uh, yeah, they built upwards, so they they had to have a separate decking support. Um, so their decking supports, they thought that they could. Um, cut a little time off by welding the bolts into the members and just slipping the decking supports into the lateral bracings, um, which was illegal. Um, all bolts and nuts have to be separate of the members. Why did you guys choose to have your cameras to go down? Or what do you think would be the pros for the con? I mean, they designed to have their cameras section go up, right? Yeah, so like I discussed, um, so if you go outside of that profile of the bridge, if we go there. Up to the top? Uh, yeah. So if you look at this, this is the profile of the bridge in which you cannot build any members, uh, nothing can go in there. So to have the decking support plus building upwards, you would have to go outside of this profile. So to build upwards, you have to go outside of these two sections and outwards. Um, but, and that would have to be a three foot eight minimum distance. So it has to be outside of three foot eight. Um, the decking has to be between three feet two inches and two foot six, which means the decking has to be separate from the main girders. Um, so which means that you can't load on the main girders uh, which will be connected to your columns, which we thought um, could create some problems. Uh, so we decided to build under the bridge, which is this section between three foot max. And um, you look at, if you guys zoom out, 
it has to be um, a minimum of one foot seven inches between and three foot, so that's why um, our sections are about a foot in length. Um, and so, yeah, we're building between that two foot six, three foot uh, two section for our decking. Yeah, Henry? Can you just do the math where you said one foot seven? Yeah, one foot seven and three. So. So you add your twelve inches. Yeah, two with the seven. Yeah, you you have a little bit of room to work. It's a three foot max. Yeah, two foot seven, so you get three collars and collars. What's that? Your collars is two foot six, right? Um. I guess that could be your Oh yeah. Check that. Guess I did not think of that. I don't, or. Yeah, it's two foot six. Yeah, or one inch off, I guess. Right. So your column, I guess, doesn't have to be at the top of the deck. Yeah, we, we can increase the column length. Yeah, by one inch. Thank you. <laughs> That's helpful. <laughs> your, your, you have one plane. Yes. Or you said that So our bridge is our decking support. It's the same. Right. Yeah. That's okay. Right? Yes. Totally okay. Yeah. We call them that. If we decided to pick this, for example, <laughs> yeah. we don't want to have it disqualified. No. So yeah. Uh, I think. Yeah. So decking support can also uh, be part of your plenty. main. Yeah. Plenty. <laughs> So we're actually um, we're getting funding actually for a steel uh, or a welding shop to actually fabricate our pieces. Um, that's what uh, that's um, assuming that we're going to get enough funding. But uh, yeah, we're, it's in the works for getting a welding shop. No, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, self welding is more for, you know, testing and stuff like that. You have three weeks in winter break. <laughs> <laughs> We're recruiting uh, juniors and sophomores. Yeah, anybody who wants welding experience, job side experience, grinding experience? Two questions. One, what do you think is the most innovative aspect of your bridge? Okay, so um, I think the most innovative thing with our bridge um, is our connection design. Uh, that's the hardest thing to model, and I think that's the thing that we've granted the biggest, the most amount of simple, uh, simplicity to uh, with our design. For constructability, um, <coughs> I think the hardest thing uh, is going to be uh, just, just building these guys. I mean, we, we were talking, Sylvia and I put a lot of work into this, so it just means that, uh, you know, 
for something like this, all of us are going to have to do a lot of pre-cutting before, you know, try to minimize what the shop has to do or else it's going to cost us a lot of money. Could you show what you have? So I guess like the most innovative part of our bridge is is that like um, you know their bridge has lateral continuous lateral support throughout the bridge, um, you know. But we're definitely gonna have to do more testing. But that middle section of the lateral bracing, that triangular. Um, if you look at Berkeley's bridge last year, they had a very similar design as far as the lateral bracing. Um, I think our main concern, I guess, throughout the whole design was the total weight. And um, not having, I guess, continuous lateral support throughout the whole bridge. And uh, hopefully, you know, after testing, um, to make sure that that bracing can withstand the lateral loads um, would definitely decrease the total amount of weight of our bridge. So. Um, and then one problem, believe we would have with uh, constructability. Um, we actually made it so that every member is going to be within the requirement. So every, I know it doesn't like to scale, but so if, for every two uh, trusses at the bottom, uh, it's going to be a two foot six member. So we have five on each side um, with, uh, this will be a two foot six section right here, cutting right there, and then um, a little piece at the end. So that's not really a problem. The uh, lateral bracing in the center is going to be like a three foot, um, like eight inch section. So we would have to cut that in half um, because our bridge width is three feet and that's the max requirement or max available. Um, so we would have to actually cut that lateral support in two. Um, which might be a problem just for constructability because uh, we, won't, we won't really have as great of access to the center of the bridge um, as we probably would like. So uh, that could just be one problem. But uh, we actually did kind of look it out. It, it's a little bit off-centered from, uh, from the island in the center of the river. So um, it shouldn't be too bad, but just having two pieces instead of one um, just makes it for a longer construction time. Yeah, so that's going to be um, three feet, uh, assuming that, um, including connections, so we're going to probably have to uh, decrease the width. Um, but we wanted to model it as three feet, um, just assuming with the connections it's going to be three feet. Uh, we know with welding it might increase the length, so we'll have to take that into account. But um, it really shouldn't change much with our design if we decide to decrease it by an inch or two. What were you guys thinking on for your lateral? They're they're broken in the center, so they're under uh, they're just over two feet for each one. So they can all connect that one point in the center. Correct. And they're very small because they're only designed for tension. These actually don't all uh, coincide at the same work point. So um, you would have, you would just have a, <coughs> a plate here and you have a plate on top and uh, where your diagonal connected to, uh, your vertical diagonal, and you have a plate here where your horizontal diagonal connected to, you have the main vertical connection. Questions? All right. Thanks for coming.